Oh, hello again everyone, welcome back, thanks for visiting once again. Um, now, I know it's been a little while since I've uh, uh, actually visited the modelling desk. I've, uh, my life has been rendered busy by other things, which may or may not include decorating the house and things of this kind, so we have to get that done, and it's, um, I'm delighted to report nearly complete, so I can get on with much more important things like decorating bits of model and things like this. So, uh, anyway, back we are to the Fokker Wolf. Um, and um, one or two of you expressed some comments in the last um, film I did uh, about the engine and I'm going to give you a quick show of, of that. I mean in particular Tron, I know that you wanted to see the um, the electrics um, and how that um, came to pass and uh, so I'm going to show you that now. We'll have a quick look at there. So let's just zero in on that. So it's a BMW 801 uh, radial engine, 14 cylinders, so we have um, seven at the front and seven at the back now because of the way that for, for those of you who are new newly visiting to um my little channel here i'll get my poker out a minute i've just taken that off screen i know but i just need to get my poker out because i wasn't prepared um i've talked about this before but the um this is um shall we say something of an optical illusion so the front cylinders on this um <laughs> Actually extend all the way to the back here to this little panel here which is the back of the engine so ordinarily what you would see with the engine is the the rear of the cylinders extending far to about this I would suspect followed by the exhaust manifolds which form a little circle and they come out in three locations uh, into the fuselage I, I'll show you that in a little bit as well and then after that you've got things like the electrical housings and various other bits and pieces including Commando Gerat which um, that's the top of the panel there Commando Gerat would have sat approximately up here which was the um, control uh, system for the amongst other things the mixture control and uh, pitch control that was used alongside the throttle so with an awful lot of Second World War aircraft. The throttle lever had three, um, well it was a throttle lever, there was a pitch control lever and then there was a mixture control lever in the Fokker Wolf FW190s. There was only one lever because of Commando Gerat so it made the job of flying the aircraft and moving the throttle about and, and directing the aircraft much much simpler. Um, so it, it was an attempt to include to uh, improve the efficiency of the aircraft but there we are anyway that, that I've digressed slightly but what I wanted to show you here was the the um, spark plug leads that I've put in so what we've used here is, is very simply um, lead wires um, and as you can see they move very easily so you have to be quite careful with them I put in this ring that I think you may remember I've drilled some holes within it um, and this then allows the, um, and as you can see, it's it's come away a little bit because it's a it's a straight piece of plastic bar that I've bent in a circle. I've shown you how to do that before. Um, I can do another one if you want to see it. Um, so um, drill some holes in it, and then essentially um, then drill out holes for the spark plugs. So there's two for each cylinder, one here and one there. You simply go around and do that one after the other so um, that's moved slightly so we'll just move that back up straight again um, and attempt to make the shape of the um, the the wires as as accurate as you can um, it, it's not always going to be particularly accurate but as you will see when we start to come to take all this lot together let's zero out a minute as we start to put all this lot together you can't see an awful lot um, and that's fine, as I've said before, when you're doing scratch building, like putting in um, you know, these um, little rods here and so on, um, the best time to learn it, the best time to improve it, is to do it when it doesn't really matter. So when all this comes together, it, again, it, it doesn't really matter all that much. So anyway, so we'll put this all together, we'll put the, uh, the fan in, I'll talk a little bit about the mechanics behind the fan in a minute, because that's, that's, that's quite an interesting little um, departure. I may very well do something with the tailplanes if there's time, but we'll also have a little look at the, um, the basic line uh, HGW is it? I think it is an HGW um, kit this for the Hasegawa Fokker Wolf um, and you can have a bit of a laugh at my expense um, because I um, took some time to start that off um, and I'll talk about that later anyway so anyway look let's let's get down to down to business as they say um, so putting this together there are two 
tabs here, one there, one there, 180 degrees apart. Um, the wider one goes in one section and the narrower one in the other. I suppose that's fairly I mean, obvious really, isn't it? Let's face it. Um, the other thing to, to think about here is that there are three um, exhaust panels here that, that feed out two at the side because this is where the machine guns the um, through the propeller machine guns or past the propeller machine guns shall we say sit um, and they fit together this fits together like that and then one out the bottom there so um, I fitted them and painted them in anyway um, I don't need to paint in here because this just fits onto the onto the fuselage after that fashion so you, you can't really see very much of that so um, and as you can see you can just see the um, the exhaust pipes there as well um, these are vents by the way which I may or may not open out probably not actually um, so the inside of this is painted um, I think it's an RLM grey I think it came out as X22 um, which I didn't think I had and turned out I did so that's good so let's just drop this in to start with um, so this fits in here like that yeah that looks to be the right side up I got that right that time I've, I've got it wrong no it's not the right way round there we go so let's take that out so when you're manipulating this with the lead wires and you do have to be a little bit careful um, no, that is right that has to be right because this distributor cap here does go that side it has to so I was correct so there we are just goes to show what I know doesn't it one tries to be organized and prepared and it doesn't always work out does it so this just slips together shall we say ever so easily it says here um, and there it is that's that's that now then we've got this annular ring um, so with the annular ring just little tab in here you can see that little tab slot there and that just sits in like that now there's going to be some need to do some fitting here because as you can see this sits a bit proud and, and it, I, it seems to fit proud uniformly all around the thing which gives rise to two thoughts one is this supposed to be like that or um, have I made a, a mess of it somewhere I, I suspect the latter and so what we might do is just try and attempt to glue that in with as little um, Gap, you know, um, overstep as possible, and then just smooth it out that way, and then just deal with this gap as it as it comes along, because we can glue in with um, extra thick. I know you like that comment, Ron, so I'll push that in there just right now. Extra thick, you know, the white cap cement. We'll hold that ready, um, and um, away we go. So I think that's probably the way I'll do it. Is is sort of fit these cowlings to the. Um, to the annular ring and then after that this fan drops in there like that and that fits quite nicely so I'll just drop that out for a minute we'll talk about that in a second um, but let's let's see if we can get this fitted anyway so I'm going to use some extra thin to begin with here um, and uh, there's not very much in there by the look of it yeah, we should have enough to be able to do this for and several other things as well actually but there we go um, so I'm going to a quick check and look in there so that's how that should go that's the right way up yeah that looks um, that looks okay there yeah so what we'll do is I'm going to just glue this annular ring on in fact, actually, I'll use this. Didn't really think about this beforehand particularly hard. See if we can just make the the fit as good as possible. See, there's 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 no oh, I've <laughs> zeroed in, and I shouldn't be zeroed in. Sorry about that, folks. I'm <laughs> it's a bit inefficient of me. I haven't done that sort of stupidity for a little time, so many apologies I got involved in thinking 
and I've often said before I shouldn't be thinking I should be paying attention to what I'm doing here I think yeah I think I'm going to try and just center this up as much as I can and then glue it in with a bit of the old um, quick setting where there's not too much of a step and then just fit it there is some detail on this surface here so I'm gonna to have to be right uh, a little careful with that but let's do that just around there quickly tack that in rather a lot of glue on that but as you can see it dries really quickly um, so um, because the central heating on, is on of course it's quite warm in here this evening so things evaporate rather rapidly and you can see there's a quite large gap there it's it's fairly sizable but we'll be able to manage with that I hope it won't be causing too much of an issue we just run around that ring there so this annular ring actually is the oil cooler so as you'll know air cooled engines didn't have radiators but there was a need to cool the the air for the um, um, you know um, cool the the engine so you had cooling air running over that um, and that um, was was quite necessary so what we'll then do is I'm just going to do a quick test fit on this because I want to make certain that we get this really pretty close if we can. So that fits into there like that. Yeah, that should be okay. That should that should fit all right. I would say that's not going to be too much of a problem from what I can see. Um, but there is going to be some filling required there. But that's not an issue, I don't think. So let us get the the extra thick, shall we call it? Oh, that's done its usual thing of sealing itself up really well so what we'll do is just dive in there and then just glue that and that that will capillary through that rather large gap and then I'm going to just run a bead of cement around here at the back here and that will bond that in I'm gonna have to leave that for some time and hopefully that should then all be up together Nice and gently. Let's get that something in there. So, I'll just drop that up there out of the way. So, there we go with that. And the the step isn't too bad. I can file that out quite easily. And um the rest of that will be absolutely fine I think so again I'm just going to just do another little test fit onto this so the uh, fitting tabs are, are there and visible so that looks yeah that fits in quite nicely there It's a little bit wider on that side. I'll investigate that at some point. I think there's a reason for that, but I think it has to do with this is not quite in properly. But look, we'll we'll get that attached together, and then that'll be something for a bit later on that we'll have to be careful with. So let's put that over there, out of the way, up there. The next thing to go on is that annular f uh, um, annular fan, which um, yeah, and then we're um, 
pretty much there with that so the, the fan sits in there and we can actually zero in what we'll do is I'll see if I can get some some light onto this so that you can see what is and isn't visible through this so we'll just zero right in so the the fan blades here do permit you to see some some things through this you can see some of the detail not a lot but some and it does give you you know something to look at someone's going to have to look really quite hard at that to give us a um, you know to give themselves an indication that that um, there is some um, something going on there shall we say someone's done some work but there we are um, I'm going to just glue that in with some um, extra thick I've got this set up differently this time um, in the sense that the tripod is in a slightly different place um, and um, there we go so what we'll do is I'll just extra thick glue that onto the um, onto the shaft there just a little dab around the I'm not really concerned about having the propeller going round I'd rather it didn't to be honest with you it only gets in the way um, there we go That's, um, and it's not going to be freely moving there's absolutely no need just so that you know, a um, little bit of background information for you. Um, I think I might have mentioned this before, but quickly. This fan was geared inside it in some sort of sun and planet assembly, which allowed this to move at, I think, one and a half times the speed that the propeller went, which means that it was physically driving air through the, the vents onto the engine when, so that when the engine was on the ground, you know, when the aircraft was on the ground, it could sit and run for a fairly extended period of time which improved operational readiness which meant in a situation where the aircraft had to be put into the air shall we say reasonably quickly the ground crew could go and start the engine and the, the engine could be running by the time the pilot got there of course with spitfires and hurricanes it was very important to start the engine and get the aircraft into the air as quickly as possible because the radiators needed airflow going through them a positive airflow through the aircraft otherwise the engines would overheat because they were not radial air cooled engines they were liquid cooled engines so the radiators were driving water around the engines of course I don't even know why I'm saying that of course you know that um, so the you know the, the the problem of running on the ground for extended periods was removed by this the the, the way that this um, 701 fan was was um, uh, was was placed and was geared so another little interesting thing so we're going to leave that to to do its thing um, so the other thing I'm going to do we're nearly 20 minutes in I've been rattling away merrily not really thinking about things very hard I'm going to have a go at um, making these um, elevators um, movable not movable but in, in a downwards position because you as you will recall with the cockpit here what I've done is slightly modified the um, the stick to point slightly forward so I want to deflect the elevators slightly down now I've given some thought to how to do this let's put my little tweaker away for my plier, uh, my tweezers and the the challenge is to be able to um, make a, a cut along here and then along there on both sides um, of course this goes 90 degrees to that otherwise you can just inject a saw into this quite happily and, and, and cut it down so my thinking on this is to cut these so that the gap is um, is is there and then cut this at one side sufficiently so that I can just effectively bend this down and then glue it so that it actually forms that slight deflection that I'm looking for. This may or may not work. We, we're going to have to see. So the idea here is to is to make this cut along here with um, a knife, not to use a, a saw, because the knife is much thinner and and will destroy less material. Um, and the way I'm going to do this is just effectively like this. 
um, and just make a series of shallow cuts along here like this until I've gone through the um, gone through the plastic and with any luck that happens so it's worthwhile considering on on this because there's a gap here the the blade of the of, of the when you make the cut will sit over the edge of the of the gap here and it will mean that when you draw the blade back you'll apply some pressure and it may spring like that which may mean that you might run your blade down this area here and make a cut into it I, I wouldn't recommend that so what I'm trying to do is to make um, to make controlled pressure onto this so that when I'm when I'm cutting um, I'm not I don't suddenly move but what you might see if I get it wrong is the blade suddenly move like this and I'm gonna have to try and let the pressure off very quickly but the thing to do is to do this on both sides now let me get on camera there you go you can see that now hopefully um, is to say is to do this on both sides there you are see that see how that suddenly went so I'll just turn that over and then turn it round both hands behind the blade or was it a hand behind the blade because these blades are pretty damn sharp so we're trying to use best practice if we can and uh, and we can then cut this as I say it feels like it's difficult or might look like it is but look it's 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 just a series of really quite um, straightforward procedures which just have to be done carefully let's come back the other way with this because I haven't quite got into that corner there just going to get underneath the magnifier a minute this might help you guys to see this as well but it certainly helps me to see it there we go I can see that much more easily now see what I'm doing so I think we've pretty much gone through that now by the look of things so what we can now do we can start to think about going down this long section here. Now, this is not quite so easy to show you. I'm going to try and zero out and show you so you can sort of see. I hope that that's not very big for you to be able to see there. Let's just zero in and see if we can get this on camera so you can see what I'm doing because it's a it's a delicate process in which um, one has to apply some pressure with the blade in order to gradually score this elevator panel so that one can make the um, appropriate bend as it were let's go back the other way and trying to keep hands away from the blade because we're applying some pressure here and um, oh, I'm not quite on camera there of course I know that you would all like to see me do myself with a blade um, I well no you wouldn't I'm sure you wouldn't I certainly wouldn't like to see anybody do that um, I say that partly in jest because around my hands in various places I have done precisely that now what would hopefully find is that after a fashion and after a while this should start to become a little flexible and it will give us the precursor to being able to make a bend on this and then what one can do is to repeat the process with the other elevator the sharp-eyed amongst you will have noticed that here there is a P and on the other side there is an S so there's a port and starboard elevator um, and um, it's not absolute well it is from the numbering absolutely clear which one which one's which but it's easy to lose them because they look exactly the same so here we go again I mean look 
th some of this stuff's a bit dull so if you want to zap through to the bit where I get through this and, and start to bend things then feel free to do so um, but if you do remember that if I tell some hugely funny witticism you'll never hear it um, and um, you might miss out so um, there we are but then again I don't I don't think I'm scheduled for witticisms just yet um, I think I told one last year and um, told a joke last year and um, maybe some people laughed maybe they didn't but there we are I can't think of one right now to be honest with you so there we are so as we go there's a degree of patience with this I think um, as as most of the time you all recognize you know you've got as much patience as is required here Just slightly off camera there, and I keep concentrating on this. And let's have a quick look in at this. I wonder if I can just look under the magnifier. There we are, getting through that. Yes, we are getting through that. It's just quite thick, and it will take a little bit of time. So we just have to be patient with it and just carefully keep slicing through. It doesn't half do it with your fingers, mind it. Um, and my hands are a bit, a bit, um, a bit sweaty because it's. Let's say the central heating's on. It's quite warm in here. And I am concentrating, and you tend to get a bit hotter when you concentrate as well. So there we go. Just want to say hello to Terry, by the way, over at um, Hobby Barn. You probably know that Terry um, uh, was in hospital for a little while because he wasn't very well, um, and um, he's better now, by all accounts. He's come home, and so he'll be. I some. I would. I wouldn't wonder. He'll be gracing lives wherever he goes. He's a great character, um, and he does these super lives. And he's and he's a, a genuinely nice guy, um, who I like very much. And do do go visit Hobby Barn. Um, he's a fabulous fellow, and uh, he goes on to um, what has been on to the Ice Queen um, Sue's lives um, uh, on on one or two occasions, I believe. And um, as I say, he's um, he's been along. Um, and um, I know that um, John Alec Ritchie has also guested at um, Sue's Lives, and, and there are, yeah, see, it's just beginning to go. It's just beginning to move. You can just about see that. Uh, so John Alec Ritchie, um, he's got nearly 2,000 subs, I think, now, but go take a look at what he does. He's, he's a, just one of the nicest people around, and he takes so much trouble to present his um, his his builds, and the effort he goes to look makes it worthwhile just going to to watch what he does. And and, and he has this fabulous um, style about him, his presentation. He's got quite a deep voice, and um, he he gently and, and and quietly explains what he's doing and. He talks about fit indexing and so on, so that you know when when you're going to build a model that he's built, you know where the problems are going to be because he outlines them to you, and I think that's really nice. So um, yeah, go visit him. Go take a look at what um, John Alec does. Um, John Alec scale modelling. He also um, m very much reveres. Um, I think they're called Bournemouthshire United Football Club. I don't know anything about football at all, but um, he likes them very much. Um, and um, you know, I suppose if you follow Manchesterford Rovers or something like that, you might perhaps say, "Well, someone's got to." And um, I believe that's just. Uh, um, oh, I've gone off camera again. What a numpty! Um, that's just um, you know, footballing hijinks of competition between between teams. But um, I think the. Uh, those Bournemouthshire boys have gone through all sorts of leagues. I oh right, what happened there then? Did that go wrong? Yes, it did. 
see I've bollocks that up look see what's happened there I wasn't paying attention so here's where it all goes wrong so you can point and laugh I'm gonna to have to repair that scratch there now because I and it's gone all the way down here doesn't matter here but it does here so I'm gonna to have to repair that so what will have happened is then I've not paid attention and made a made a balls up it's one for the swear box I think really um, so uh, yeah we're, we're nearly there actually I'm nearly through this it's a shame I got nearly through this and then made that bit of a mess but it can be filled in easily just have to sand down that surface and then just address it with a little bit of um, a little bit of cement there we go so now look, we can we can start to think about looking at bending this you can see that there so we're just about through there I'm not going to cut any more at that section there but I bet you I've been off bloody camera the whole time haven't I so we're nearly there yeah that's see how that's come away there damn it so I'm gonna have to try and chip into this into this corner here so modification of kits isn't for everybody um, you know most people want to do it according to Hoyle and bless them for doing so good for them I thought I'll, I'll take the challenge up on this and see if I can and um, you know, I think it just adds a little bit of uniqueness to the model it's a bit like my avowed intent to use um, paint masks wherever I can on um, be careful here uh, on on um, RAF and um, Fleet Air Arm aircraft because I think the effect is just marvellous. I, I love the effect of it. So that's that's nearly there. I'm inclined to just sort of poke through with a. It's not quite through. I'm just poking through here with a with a blade just to try and there we go we're nearly there so what I think the the move here is is to so port I can just deflect that down slightly as you can see right here we go there we go look so as you can see we zero right in I'm going to come in quite detailed on this now deflecting the elevator slightly down allows this panel to point up and stand proud that will immediately be noticeable even though it's a small deflection it will immediately be noticeable um, to the observer and we then have a unique feature there so that's what we do when we modify so if I hadn't made a complete ass job of running my blade out of there then I wouldn't have this position here um, I'm going to have to repair that um, off camera or possibly on camera I'll tell you what let's see what we can do but I mean again we have to be hell of a careful here because what's going to happen is yeah that's going to be tough I'm going to just hold that down and use just a tiny bit of extra thin quick setting just along here there we go that's just cleaned it up magically so there we go so we've now got a deflection of the elevator have we got a downwards oh, bollocks <laughs> uh, one for the swear box it should be at, I didn't want an upwards deflection I wanted a downwards deflection that's the upside of it but I can still do that there we go look 
I only want a little deflection, don't need a lot. So there you go, you can point and laugh at this. So what we'll do is we'll just run a little bit of extra thin quick setting in there. Oh, damn it, there we go. So I've just broken that off so we can glue it back in. There we are. And let that set and we then have a downwards deflection of the elevator. So the next trick is to repeat that um, in uh, the starboard one and make sure the deflection is the same direction of course as you can probably work out. So um, you know so <laughs> you don't want that one pointing up. Um, so there we go. Anyway so that's that. That's one of those done so we then need to do the starboard one. The other thing is, is I don't know if you guys, you probably do know about um, these, um, what they call basic line HGW seatbelt sets. I started to make a little effort on this. It's just a couple of minutes I'll take on this before I completely bore you all to death. Started to put the seat belts on. So what we have here, and it's they're impossibly small and just absolutely bloody minute pieces. Um, and so I've started to put these together and what you're doing is feeding through these little belt sections here into the um, you know into the um, into the straps oh that's flipped over and then you can pin these to the top of the um, the top of the whatnot like that. Uh, I got to make some more adjustments to this as well, but that essentially is it's not focusing, is it? There we go. That essentially is what it looks like. Now these these things here, these straps. Um, I just put that over there. I didn't know this, but I do now. These straps have a a backing on them, which you have to remove. And I got as far as really. <laughs> Um, thinking how on earth am I going to get a second piece of belt through this thing here with these great bloody thick <laughs> bits of thing like this and then accidentally um, removed the backing and thought oh dear have I messed this up having pulled this backing strip off I then um, realized that actually that's probably what it was designed to do and it should be like that anyway so um, I recommend to you, if you're going to use these, make sure you take the backing strip off and then putting the straps through all these little tiny buckles here, which are, as I say, remarkably small. I'll just zero in on them. You can see what they look like. Um, they're, they're absolutely minute. Um, you know, so if you do that properly, the, the, the effect is really pretty good. Um, there's also uh, inside and outside uh, masks for these. Other manufacturers make masks as well in for inside outside. I think um, Nigel's modelling bench uses the ASK. I happened to get these because I knew that there was a belt and a mask set with it. You also got wheel masks as well. Um, so uh, there we are. So I'm, I'm going to get to work on that. I shall complete my work on mending this section here. Um, and um, making those um, elevators um, modified um, and then we'll move through to the next step in the next video um, and um, I shall look forward to seeing you then when we'll be putting uh, wing panels on and various things like that so that will be um, quite amusing um, and um, also putting the um, fuselage halves together and such like so um, hopefully not too far distant future I shall do another one of these uh, and um, I hope to encounter you then for those of you who lasted the 40 minutes that this lasted thank you very much indeed much obliged to you um, and um, I look forward to seeing you um, in the comments um, and be happy to um, talk to you when that happens so till the next time thanks very much for uh, stopping by um, good luck in all your projects and enjoy your modeling um, and I'm pleased to be back thank you very much 
take care see you on the next one bye for now